Most of us lead a busy lifestyle and this can easily stand in the way of you progressing in your climbing, primarily because you're not gonna be able to get to the gym and go training as much as you need to. Here at Lattice, we deal with this situation all the time because most of our clients work full-time jobs, they have kids, they have a career, but we think the best way to overcome this is by having an effective home training setup. So in today's episode, we're gonna go through an example full body workout which can replace your gym session and go through some of our favorite products and training tools that you can can have right at home. I'm gonna start this session with working on the grip strength and my forearm strength. And this is principally what we might do at the beginning of a climbing session. We've always said that if you're really trying to build your finger strength, this is often gonna start at the beginning of your session when you're most fresh and able to recruit all of those muscles. Many climbers will use a hangboard setup for this. However, we've covered hangboarding pretty extensively in the past, including a really great video with our climber's guide to hangboarding. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. Today, however, I'm gonna go through a alternative option, which is more of an arm lifting setup. And I really like this setup. It's something I do at home because it's actually great for training multiple different grip types using a few different training tools. The other added benefit to this form of training is that many people are not allowed to drill into their walls, particularly if you're renting. So this is gonna be easy to move away and bring out just when you wanna train. For this training session, I'm really simply just gonna be using 10 second pickups. So this is a yielding isometric where I pick the weight up off the floor. And this is really similar to a mat hang protocol you might do on a hangboard. So I'm gonna be training multiple different grip types. I'm gonna start with a half four crimp. And then I'm also gonna be working on a deep and shallow pinch, as well as using the heavy roller to be working on that sloper strength with that cocked wrist position. Again, all of these 10 second pickups, I'm gonna be doing four sets for each different grip position. Because my main aim here is building strength, the rest time wants to be fairly long, normally around two minutes, let's say. The main aim here is just to have good quality rest so that each set is performed in really good quality. An issue I've run into with the half four crimp position is that I'm getting to the point where I need quite a lot of weight on my lifting pin. And obviously this is not very practical because I only have so much weight at home. So a way to get around this is moving to a smaller edge or moving to varied grip positions. For example, the front free and half free crimp position. This drops the weight pretty considerably, gives me new grip position to work on, and I don't need to have as much weight on the lifting pin. Much like in the climbing wall, once you've finished climbing, which unfortunately we were not able to do in this session, we will move over to our gym equipment and start doing some conditioning. So we're gonna do the same here at home and we're gonna to move to doing some pull-ups and some core training. I've got a removable pull-up bar that I can mount on my door frame. And for this session, I'm gonna be doing wide pull-ups and also lock-off training. The reason I'm gonna choose wide pull-ups for this session is it's a more challenging form for me than the regular pull-up. And this means I don't have to add much weight, so I don't need to worry too much about damaging the door frame. And also I can use some resistance bands to assist this position until I can build up to doing it at body weight or with additional weight. I'm also gonna follow this with lock-off training, which is gonna be much more narrow to the body. This is much more about the biceps. So it would complement the wide pull-ups, which is much more about the lat engagement. For the wide pull-ups, I'm gonna go for three sets of six to eight reps, and I'm gonna make sure that the band I've got or the additional weight is sufficient to make that a challenging rep range. And for the lock-offs, I'm gonna be holding for five to 10 seconds using a resistance band. Once I can get to 10 seconds, I'm gonna try reducing that resistance so that I can then only hold for five seconds and again, progress the amount of time I can hold that lock off for. Also importantly, the lock off is gonna be held at 90 degrees as this is a nice middle ground by being really open or really closed. Similar to the arm lifting, I'm gonna be taking enough rest so that I can perform each set in really good quality. And again, two to three minutes is a good amount of rest for this. For the core session, we're gonna to go to one of my favorites for developing core tension and core stability. All these exercises are performed in an isometric manner so we can build up the time we hold these positions for to increase the difficulty. Today, I'm just gonna to be going for three sets of 15 seconds with each position. 
The three positions we're going to work through is the Spider-Man hold, the Superman hold and the L-sit. The Spider-Man hold is excellent for training that tension through the front of your body all the way from your hands down to your feet. The Superman hold is going to be excellent for resisting rotation through the middle of your core. And then the L-sit is also excellent for training your abdominals and your hip flexors in that deep tuck position. The final part of this session is our flexibility training and this is what most people would do at home anyways. However, typically home flexibility work is more about relaxed stretching. This session is going to be a little bit more active. We're going to use things like Cossack squats, a dynamic pancake and also an isometric side split. The Cossack squats should come first and this is a really important part of flexibility training. You need to make sure that your hips are warmed up and moving well before you start doing any form of intense stretching. You want to take a wide stance here so that when you squat or lunge into your side leg that your knee is going to be on the outside of your shoulder so that you can get a stretch into this deep squat position. We're going to do about six reps on each leg however the number of reps you do will depend a little bit on your ability and your strength in your lower body. This needs to be enough reps to fully warm up the lower body so I will do at least two sets of this until I feel like I can move on and my hips are nice and warm. Importantly, you want to use a really slow tempo here. So moving slowly into that end range, otherwise you're not going to get truly as deep as you can if you move fast into that end range. In addition to moving slowly there, I also want to spend a little bit of time. So pause in that end range, just to let those muscles relax a little bit further again. And if you can, keep going deeper while you're paused there. The pancake exercise here, I'm going to be doing with elevated hips. Now, most people will need to elevate their hips for the pancake unless they're already very flexible and can do a pancake exercise on the floor. Keeping the hips raised is going to help you get into an anterior pelvic tilt so that your hips can roll into it and this will help lengthen your hamstrings. This pancake exercise is excellent in itself for developing that hamstring flexibility for things like heel hooking, but also it's going to be really important for training your ability to perform a side split. Most people will find that they plateau or stagnate in that side split ability because their hamstrings are just not flexible enough to assume a good hip position for getting deep into the side split. For the pancake, I'm going to do roughly six reps and again for two sets. It's still important to move slowly here, in fact probably even more slowly than in your Cossack squat, so make sure that you reach forwards, try and keep your back in a neutral position with that anterior pelvic tilt and spend time pausing in that stretch before coming out. The side split is the final part of this session and this is to open up the hip adductors. This is important for moving over vertical terrain and opening that frog position which climbers often train. However, I believe this is more effective than the frog position. It still works the same muscles but you have much more leverage and get more intensity in this position. I'm going to spend at least 45 seconds in this side split position because it takes me time to be able to get to that end range and really let my hips open up and relax. And again, I'm going to go for two sets of this. The benefit of a home training session like this is you can perform this easily a couple times a week and then still be able to get out on the weekend and go climbing. Any of those weekend warriors where you don't have the time to get out, you can do this a couple times a week, keep progressing your strength and climbing ability off the wall and then get that mileage in, get that climbing and skill based stuff done on the weekend. Do keep in mind this isn't actually as good as a climbing session. If you can get to the wall this should always take priority over something like this which is more general conditioning and strengthening. That skill based element which you get from being on the wall is really important. So try to get to the gym as much as possible but then supplement with this when you can get there. This session is a bit more of a framework for your training. However, if you prefer the follow along style home training, we've still got you covered. So go check out this video with Tom and Ollie and we'll see you next time.